Welcome to Drawing from Nature. Today I'm going to be drawing the North American Green Tree Frog. We're also going to learn about this and many other frogs and toads. For example, do you know what the biggest frog in the world is? Or what's the smallest? Do you know where you can find the nictitating membrane on this frog? If you're interested in the answers to any of those questions, or if you'd like to draw along with me today, stick around while we draw from nature. Frogs come from a group of animals known as amphibians. To be an amphibian means you live part of your life in the water and part of your life on land, and most frogs do just that. Frogs are spread out all over the world. In fact, they live on every single continent, with the exception of Antarctica, and they've been around for a long, long time. They've been around for over 180 million years, which makes them older than the dinosaurs. There are almost 3,000 different species of frog spread out all over the planet, and the specific species of frog that we're going to be drawing today is the green tree frog of North America. It has a lot of characteristics associated with true frogs, so I thought it would be a, a good kind of uh, demonstration of drawing a frog. And we're going to start right here. Um, before I begin, I want to just talk about the uh, tools that we're going to be using today. Obviously, a sheet of paper. I have a very large sheet of paper here in front of me. You don't have to have a large sheet of paper, just an 8.5 by 11. My favorite kind is recycled, like old junk mail that comes. You flip it around, usually has an open side on the back. I'm going to be doing it on this so that you can see it really easily, but any size really works. And the implement that I'm going to be drawing with are crayons. I have a black crayon. I have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple, plus a brown crayon, in case that comes up. I know that if you buy crayon sets, they come with 64 colors, 128 colors, 3,000 colors. That's great. That's really exciting. But you can make do with just the basic uh, primary and secondary colors. The primary colors are red, yellow, and blue, if we're talking about uh, subtractive mixing colors. And the secondary colors are green, orange, and purple. So the first thing that uh, you and I should both do if we're going to set up our image of our frog here is to kind of sketch out some rough outlines to make sure that we don't make our picture too big for our page or too small for our page. So what I'm going to do here is uh, kind of define this here as the area that where we want to draw our frog. So the nose is going to be out over here. It's going to be facing away from me. And its hindquarters are going to be back over here. That way we'll be make sure that we're able to fit it all in here. So I'm just going to very lightly with my black crayon I'm going to make a little line right here, very, very lightly, right there. That's going to be right around the tip of its nose. And back over here in this area, uh, I'm going to make another line right around, let's say, right around here. These lines are just kind of light. Uh, they're going to be uh, referred to as guidelines. We're going to be uh, going over darker later. So if these aren't perfect, you don't have to worry about it. These are just rough guidelines to say the bums here and the nose is over there. The next step is we want to start uh, setting up kind of the rough form of our frog. The green tree frog of North America is kind of a, a chunky sort of frog. Some th uh, frogs are thin, some frogs are very plump. Uh, this is kind of an intermediary frog. It's not like a bowling ball, but it's also not really thin. Uh, and this is the rough shape of its body. And what I'm going to do, I'm kind of have the crayon floating over the paper right here. I'm just going to start lightly touching it down. I'm going to make an oval shape because its body is kind of an oval shape, sort of the shape of an egg. Here we go. And I do it lightly so that if I don't like my shape, I can kind of change it and it's not going to be a big deal. Can you see that? Got kind of like an oval shape here. So here's our frog, here's the body, and the head's going to be over in this area over here. The next thing I want to do is create the head. Now, one thing that's specific to frogs is that they don't have necks. They're all like uh, uh, NFL football players. Uh, they uh, uh, don't have any ability to really turn their head around. So uh, as we're attaching the head to the body, it's going to be direct. It's not gonna, we're not going to draw a head and then connect it with a neck. It just uh, goes right from head into neck. So if this is the nose up here, what we're going to do is kind of bring this line up a little bit. And then we're going to taper it right to the, this back here. Right like that. So we've got our body, a little connection up to the nose, and then we're going to connect down here as well. And you can see this one has a little curve up. This one's going to have a little curve up also. And you see, I didn't join it directly down here. So something kind of like that. 
So now you're starting to see kind of the rough form of a frog. There's gonna be some eyes here, nose, mouth is here, little chubby arms and legs around this area right here, okay? So the next step what we wanna do is start defining where those legs actually connect. Uh, so we're gonna start with their front legs. Their, uh, you know, start with their shoulders. So one shoulder is gonna connect right around in this area. And what I like to do is kind of make the circle, like if you, this was a toy frog and you're gonna like pop off the uh, limbs. <laughs> Uh, don't do that with a real frog. Uh, what would what would like the uh, the hole where you pop the uh, the little toy limb off look like? Be a hole kind of like that. So that's the connection point. That's its shoulder on this side, kind of facing us. In the back, the back legs are a little different. Frogs are kind of a unique uh, body shape uh, when you compare them to other animals. Frogs have relatively short front legs and relatively long back legs. They're disproportionate in that way. Uh, and the entire shape of the legs is pretty different. So the back legs, they're gonna have kind of a, a longer, more stretched oval shape where that leg connects right in there. So we've got our two connection points. So let's start working on, on this front leg right here. This shoulder is gonna go to an elbow. And what I'm gonna do for the elbow is kind of figure out where I want it to be. I want the elbow to be here and the hand to be down in this area. So I'm gonna make kind of a circle where I want the elbow to be. And I'm gonna look at it and I'm gonna think, does that, does that look like about the right, thi right thickness? Uh, you know, should it be thinner, should it be bigger? That's why we're working very lightly at this point. I think that looks pretty good right there. And now we're gonna make its, its wrist where it, it, it connects to its hands. I think it's gonna be down here. And we're gonna make that kind of like a flat oval in this area right here. So we've got shoulder, elbow, and kind of the palm of the hand and wrist area. Now we're gonna connect those two together. So as you, because we're drawing a frog, they, they can be kind of a little chubby. This is a little bit of a chubby frog. So we're gonna do curved lines. Curved line up here and a bit of a curved line down here as well. And now we're gonna connect the elbow down to the uh, hand. And frogs are a little bit uh, unique where it, it tends, to, in my arm, it's fatter here and it gets thinner here. And a frog, it's actually the other way, way around. It's a little thinner here, it tends to get a little bit fatter as you go out towards their hand. And we're gonna reflect that right here. So we're gonna take the elbow and connect it out to the hand, kind of like that. See how it gets a little bit fatter as it goes out. So we're gonna leave this area for a little bit and we're gonna go back to the back legs. Now, frogs have legs that are very different from yours and mine. They have their hips, they have their knees, and they have their ankle, uh, their heel, but the, the foot of their leg is really long. It almost looks like another segment of bone from the whole leg. It's like they almost kind of have t uh, knees in two different places. They don't, that's just the way that it looks, but as we're drawing it, uh, it's almost gonna feel like they have extra knees in there, and we're gonna reflect that. So this leg is gonna kind of fold forward, and then it's gonna go back, and then the foot's gonna come down from there. So let's get, in the same way we went from shoulder to elbow, we're gonna go shoulder to knee. And the knee is gonna be right in this area, it's kinda of coming towards us, it's a little foreshortened. All right, so here's the knee. And then we're gonna do uh, what's sort of the heel, which is back here. Frogs usually have the legs go forward, and then they, they bend backwards, and then they go into the foot. So the heel is gonna be up in this area, they usually tuck it in pretty closely somewhere right around there. Let's connect these just the way we did the, this area here. So we've got the front of the leg coming in like that. That's uh, uh, where the muscle kind of comes up to the knee. And we're gonna have it fold around to the back here. So we're gonna come right around the knee all the way back there like that. Now we're gonna do the fold here, same way. Just kind of a curve right like that. So we can see the hip to the knee to the heel and then the foot's going to kind of come down from here and we're going to just make a line like that and this is eventually going to be the, where the toes are. We're going to mess with the toes later on, okay? Next, what I'd like to uh, do is uh, get a little bit of the, the body here together. This is looking good. It's looking like some sort of amphibious sort of creature. Let's work on the belly here. It's practically done just with our guideline. I mentioned that frogs have all sorts of different body shapes. They come in all different sizes as well. The biggest frog that we know of in the world is called the Goliath frog, and it is big. Its body is about a foot long. If you uh, held it and its legs draped down, it can be 
uh, getting close to three feet from the tip of the nose to the tip of the toes. Uh, and it weighs about seven pounds. Now the smallest frog could fit on the tip of your thumb. It's only about a half an inch uh, wide. That's a really big difference between the, the biggest and the smallest creatures. A lot of variability when it comes to frogs, not just in their body shape, but in their body size. Let's work on the, the body shape here. Frogs have uh, their upper hip bones, kind of up here. It's uh, where the back of their hip kind of lands. There's one kind of bump here, and there's going to be another bump over there. And we're going to kind of position those. Now, I'm just looking at these, and I feel like I, I should bring this one back a little bit. It's okay to make mistakes, that's why we do this light. I'm gonna shift this back just a little bit. So I really meant to put it right here. The hip bones taper back to what would be kind of the tailbone. Uh, in humans, we have a tailbone, though you can't see our tails. And uh, in frogs, they have a tailbone too. And the tails are only represent, uh, uh, expressed in frogs when they're in their tadpole stage. All right, and we're gonna kind of curve down to the tailbone right around there. I'm just gonna work on that, that heel a little bit there. All right, so we've got our, our hips here. Let's work on the face. That's the fun part here. As we begin with the face, let's uh, start by kind of positioning our eyes. One eye is gonna be right here. Let's do a circle for this eye. Frogs have very, very large eyes. They use them for swallowing. And uh, they have multiple eyelids. Uh, they have... Uh, regular eyelids on the top and the bottom, which they are able to use when they're swallowing and they pull the eyes down into the sockets. The eyes can close that way. They have an extra eyelid called the nicotating membrane, which is kind of a clear eyelid, and it comes up from the bottom and they can use that to protect their eyes, like if they're underwater or in some environment where they, they need to protect their eyes for some reason. All right, so here's one eye. Let's do the other eye, which, like I said, they, they come up out of the head. It's on the other side. We're only gonna see part of it. It's up over there. Seeing it come out of the other side there, okay? Uh, from here, we can start working on the back because we can go right from this hip bone up to the eye over here. I'm gonna do this with a couple little curves, okay? It's gonna first curve down and then there's gonna be a little bump back here, kind of behind the skull, okay? So we're gonna first come down and then up like that, okay? Now that we have kind of the eyes roughly positioned, let's get the nostrils in here. Frogs breathe through their, their nostrils. They breathe through their lungs. Here's one nostril right there, and the other one is represent just on the far side over there. They breathe through their nostrils, uh, you know, like you or I do, they have lungs. Uh, they also get oxygen through their skin directly. Uh, in fact, when a lot of frogs are hibernating, uh, they will go underground, and that's where they're gonna get their oxygen is by actually breathing directly through their skin. Uh, next thing we're gonna draw here is the mouth, right here, which they obviously use for eating. And I think everyone knows about the famous way frogs eat frequently by shooting a sticky tongue out of their mouth. Their mouth is gonna come back to about here and it's gonna have a couple little uh, curves in it. First it's gonna kinda curl up and then it's gonna have a little bit of a downward curl. All right, so curling up and then a little bit of a downward curl there, okay? And we're gonna follow the jaw line beneath that with kind of a, a line that sort of roughly copies that. that will connect out over here. Now we're gonna do their throat, their, uh, which is their vocal sac. A lot of uh, frogs will vocalize and uh, every different frog species has its own vocalization. They use it for communicating with each other, either saying, hey, get out of here, this is my territory, or hey, come on, the party's over here, you know, when it's during mating season. They all have uh, their own vocalizations, at least the ones that do vocalize, and they use their vocal sac oftentimes to inflate it up in order to be louder. So we're gonna create that right here under there, and it's gonna come right around to where their, uh, their shoulder is, right here. All right, next, let's start uh, kind of roughing this in, but bef before we do that, the one last thing we gotta do is just the, uh, the leg on the other side. We can see this leg, this leg. This back leg here is gonna be mostly hidden. We're gonna see a little bit of the back heel, back here, which we can draw in, kind of a, a mirror image of that. Uh, and we're gonna be able to see this other front leg, and I think 
when frogs sit, they kind of are spread out like this. They use their front legs for stability. And I think the other palm is going to be right up in this area, up here, and we'll kind of just have the arm kind of going back behind over there. Let's draw their feet and their hands now, okay? Uh, we can start on here, and they're going to have uh, three toes that are going to come out from the, the front that we're going to be able to see. And I'm just going to draw guidelines to begin with, and then we're going to kind of uh, flesh out around those guidelines. So the middle toe is going to come down and go up a little bit. And then the toe on this frog's far right is going to come down in this direction, maybe go up a little bit. And then this far toe, you're not going to see much of it because it's kind of partly behind the arm. Come up in that direction a little bit. Now let's do this one up over here. And, it, and there is kind of a, uh, a thumb that's back here, which you might see a little bump of, but you wouldn't see much of. They've got three fingers and one thumb on their front leg. This one, let's do that middle finger again. Coming around and then down. And we'll do the far finger on the back side with a little kick up like that. Let's have one finger kind of coming towards us here. And in, on this uh, hand, we will be able to see the thumb. Let's have it come back in this direction. Now we've got these spindly little fingers. They're kind of guidelines. Let's uh, make them a little fatter. So at the very end, uh, they have a pad. A lot of frogs have a little sticky pad on the ends of their fingers, and they use that to grip if they are especially a tree frog and they need to climb something. So we're going to express these little, these little pads. And you see I'm kind of making the letter C, where the open part is facing back, because we're going to connect that to the, the finger later on. Okay, we'll do that here, and here, and one down here, like that. Okay, now let's connect them up. And remember these little lines in the middle, they are just kind of the guidelines. So we're going to kind of make a thickness on either side. Here's two lines like that. So we've got our guideline in the middle, and then the thickness is right there. And we'll bring this finger up in the same way, the bottom surface and the top surface, and this bottom surface, and it gets a little bit hidden behind this finger, and top surface up like that. And we'll do the same for this hand. So bottom surface of this toe, top surface. Now we'll do the next toe here, we'll do the bottom surface, and top surface, and for this back toe, bottom and top. And you can already see there's no mistaking what we have so far. It's definitely starting to look like a frog, but we still got a little bit more work to do just to get the lines together. Let's work on this back to, uh, foot here. Now I mentioned they have extremely long back feet where the foot itself is as long as this distance between the knee and the heel. It almost looks like another you know, length of the leg. So uh, let's get these really uh, long kind of toes and foot in here. Uh, there are four toes on the back, just like there are on the front. And we'll do those in the same kind of guideline kind of sense. So we've got one toe kind of coming out here, one toe maybe straight, oftentimes a couple will be kind of grouped in the middle, and then we'll have kind of one toe coming off this way. Same thing as before, we'll do these little C shapes that face back, the little sticky pads on here. As I mentioned, this is the green tree frog of North America. There are other tree frogs in North America. I live in New England, and in New England, the tree frog that we see most commonly around here is called the spring peeper, which is a very tiny frog. Not as tiny as that tiny little half-inch frog that I mentioned could sit on your thumb, but a spring peeper could easily sit on your thumb. It's only about an inch or so uh, in size. It's a light tan color, and you can hear them all the time at night making their peeping noise. Uh, the most common frog in North America is, uh, well, it's a whole family of frog known as leopard frogs. Uh, if you live in North America, you're very likely to have seen some type of leopard frog in your area. They're the most ubiquitous type of frog that's around here. The biggest frog in North America that we have is called the bullfrog, and those are, you know, roughly about that big, and they are, you can feel those in your hands when you catch them. All right, so we've got our toes all laid out here. And the last general feature that we need to make sure we put in is an ear. Yes, frogs do have ears. They don't stick out of their heads the way that our, uh, our ears stick out of our heads. Uh, but they have ear drums, and that is a circular patch back here. Oftentimes, in some species of frogs, the males will have larger uh, circular patches here for their eardrums, and the females will have smaller patches. Uh, in this species, 
They're about this size right here, just behind the eyes. And uh, when sound comes and it strikes this the skin surface, it works just the way that our ears does. All that they're missing is the cartilage part that sticks out of our head. The last thing we have to do before we start really starting uh, darkening up these lines is just to finish up this eye a little bit. Now, I, I made this large area uh, to define the eyeball, but the entire thing is not open. We're going to create the top eyelid, kind of a, a line right there for the top eyelid. We'll do the bottom eyelid down here, and we'll kind of connect the two. Round, soft edges, kind of like that. And the shape of the pupil in this frog is kind of an oval shape. So I'm going to lightly draw in that oval shape, kind of like that. And we'll leave it at that for there. Okay, so there we have our basic frog layout. We were able to get it to fit on the page, we included everything, and now we go from these light lines to darker lines. These are the lines that we are actually intending to keep. So why don't we start on the top here, okay? So we're going to start up at this nose, and we're going to do a dark line connecting the nose to this eye. And then we're going to smoothly go up over the eye and continue all the way back over this little bump, the, the back of the head, like this, down this little curve here. If there's anything about your guidelines that you don't like, now's the time where you can kind of tweak those things around. As you can see, some of our earlier guidelines, they really pair, pale in comparison to the dark lines that we're putting in here. So you really can play around with your guidelines and not have to worry so much about, you know, whether you make any mistakes, because once you start putting these dark lines in, that's when you really start you know, creating what's really going to feel like your picture. Here's their hip bones, just going over it right here and down into their legs. Frogs have amazingly strong legs for their size. Most frogs can jump about 20 times their body length. Uh, if, that's, uh, if you were a person and you had legs as strong as a frog's uh, and you were, say, about 5 feet tall, that's 5 times 20, that's an incredibly <laughs> long jump that you could create there. Um, so frogs can do really amazing things for their scale. I'm coming around their legs right now. Now, I, I drew a lot of lines here, but we're not going to uh, put strong uh, final lines over all of these. We're not going to draw a line over here, and we're not going to be drawing lines around these like circle-like uh, structures that we created here. I am going to uh, bring this line down here to the, kind of the fold behind the knee. I'm going to terminate it right around there. Why don't we start with the knee here. We'll go around our knee surface here. And we're going to bring this line right up into about here. This is kind of where it folds into the body. So darkening up this line to right through there. Okay. And then bringing, I guess this would be kind of the frog's shin all the way back. And we're not going to connect all the way. We're going to stop it right around here. So we can leave a gap because the, the foot folds uh, back behind there. Now let's start coloring down along these, these toes. Nice and dark. Through here, curving, going around that, that pad, the bottom, around that pad. And now we're going to come down, color these guys up right here. All right, going around the toe, and this one here, and down. And then we'll get this last toe, and that is going to be the last of the hard lines for this leg. We had the other heel from the back leg here. Why don't we darken that up right now? Just like that. We're back there. And before we go to the front of the frog, why don't we uh, take one more note of this, uh, this hip bone right here. And I still feel like this hip bone should shift back just a little bit. So I'm going to play with that a little bit until it kind of looks right to me. And I think somewhere right in here is where we want it. So that is going to be where I finally decide to put my hip bone right there. Now let's work on this leg here. Uh, 
Again, just like the back leg, we're not gonna uh, darken in all of these lines. We're just gonna be doing some of the lines. Let's start by this one right on the top here, the top of the forearm. It's gonna stop right around here and nice and smooth down to the top of the, the foot. And we'll do the back, same thing, from the elbow right down here. And we're gonna do a little bump out here, kind of the pad of the hand to give the feel that there's some weight being put down on that foot. And same thing as we did with these toes, we'll do with these toes here, nice and smooth. And around here. One nice thing about when you are drawing animals is you can suggest a lot about the, the texture of the skin or the fur based on your lines. If you wanna draw something that has a very smooth skin, you want your lines to be very smooth. And if you want to draw something that has uh, rougher skin, like scales or fur, you can really suggest a lot of that in, in the type of lines that you do. And as uh, we draw more animals together in this series, you get to see a lot of the variety of uh, feels that you can get just by creating different line shapes. We're going to do the, uh, the bicep of the frog here. And this line is going to come up and terminate around here, and this one will stop right around the back of the shoulder right there. So here we come down, swooping down, nice and smooth. And this one too, swooping down, nice and smooth, and firm that up a little bit. All right, before we do this uh, foot over here, I want to kind of finish up the face so that when we're finishing uh, drawing these lines uh, of the foot, we know exactly where to stop them because we don't want to overextend them past his throat and it looks like he has kind of like a transparent throat. Now, this vocal sac, when it inflates, it does become somewhat translucent, but it's not inflated here, so we shouldn't be able to see anything through it. So we're gonna finish up this stuff first. We're gonna start by uh, starting from this nostril. We started from the back of the nostril when we headed towards the back end of the frog and we're gonna just uh, note this nostril by making a little bump right around there, and then come smoothly around the front of the, the nose, and then swooping in for the mouth, okay? So we're coming around here like that, and then swoop in for the mouth, and then that downturn, a little bit of a downturn. It looks like he's not having the best day. Not as, not as much as a toad. Toads always look a little bit more depressed than frogs do, but, uh, you know, they always, oftentimes have that downward turn of their mouth, and it, it suggests an emotion, which is not necessarily there. All right, now let's do the jaw, same thing. So we're gonna start from here, and jaw comes, and a little bit of a swoop up, just like that. So it curves down and around, and then does a little bit of a dip in, and then swoops up like that. Last thing we're gonna do on the general body here is the, uh, the throat sac the vocalizing sac. I feel like I made it a little bit big when I was doing my guidelines, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna shrink it in a little bit while I'm doing my final lines. Here we go. And that'll join right, right in front of here. So these, these two lines are two separate things. It joins in right there. Now let's finish up with this, uh, this little foot here. Oh, I know, I'm noticing I never, uh, I never finished up this thumb here. The thumb was gonna point towards us and it was gonna do something kind of like that, okay? So uh, let's start by darkening up these pads and uh, oop, I broke a crayon, <laughs> not a big deal. I'm just gonna peel back some paper. Now when you break a crayon, it obviously doesn't have a sharp tip anymore, uh, but the sharp edge of the crayon can actually be used as a sharp tip as long as you are uh, holding it in the right direction. So I'm just gonna be using the, the broken new clean edge as a sharp tip and you can see what a really thin line you can create if you hold the crayon properly. I don't want thin lines, so I want nice thick lines. So I'm just gonna push it in through this way. Okay, here we go. And the other finger, and finger pad here. All right, and we're almost there. And after we finish with this, we'll get the eye, the nostril, the ear, and then we can start getting to some color. We're not going to leave that out. All right. Frogs have an enormous variety of color to them. Many frogs are just uh, green or brown 
or grayish, and that's for camouflage purposes. But there are many frogs that have really, uh, truly brilliant colors, and uh, many of those actually are poisonous. They have poison glands in their skin, and they're, they're quite dangerous to touch for humans. In fact, if you're ever out and you see a very, very brightly frogged, especially if you are in a tropical region, uh, you definitely do not want to touch it. Uh, with many animals, uh, all you have to worry about is whether they have claws or whether they bite you or not. But these uh, poison dart frogs, merely touching them transmits the poison onto your skin, and that is uh, tremendously dangerous. So you definitely want to stay away from very brightly colored frogs and just let them be. And that's probably a good policy for most frogs in general. Yeah, they are living their lives, doing the best they can to catch food, and you don't want to, you don't want to harass them too much because they've, they've, they've got important business they need to get to. All right, we're going to finish up the eye here. This any way to give a drawing life, it is to really pay attention to getting the eye right. If you get the eye right and the mouth right, you can make a lot of other mistakes and your drawing's still gonna look pretty nice. What I'm gonna do, as I, before I color in this pupil, I'm gonna draw the outline of the pupil. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make kind of a oval inside the pupil. I'm gonna make it up in this upper corner here. You can see that right there. So it's an oval inside of an oval. And the reason I've uh, kind of uh, drawn that area out is what I want to do is I don't want to color that in black. I'm going to color the rest of it in black. And you'll notice how much expression and life that suddenly gives to it. Those are called eye lights uh, in professional photography. Uh, people will put lights specifically to show up in the uh, the uh, subject of their, their portrait photograph. Uh, it really brings a lot of life to whatever you are foot, uh, photographing, or in this case, drawing. And I think uh, you can see just there how much life just popped into this image just by putting that little, that little light there. Uh, the uh, last couple things we want to do before we abandon the black for a little while is I want to do a little bit more uh, notation of this, this ear area, but I don't want to be as dark as everywhere else. This is not something that has a, a specific form. We just want to kind of uh, uh, suggest it. So I'm, I'm going to draw just a couple of little dashed black lines around it like that. So it hints that there's something there, but we are not, uh, you know, drawing a circle around it because there isn't a circle around it in real life. Uh, and the other thing I want to do before we uh, leave this is add a nostril right here, just a little dot. It's kind of like a comma where it's a little thicker in the front and then just give it a pull back. And I want to give just a little bit of a brow over this eye. And I'm going to start that with a guideline. Something kind of like this. Make sure it feels right before we darken it in. So it's a little bit closer in this area and a little bit wider over here. I want to just kind of do that until we feel it works for us and we're trying to echo the other eye bump there. That's working for me. That looks good to me. So I'm going to darken that up. Just a little like that. Okay, so now we're all set with the black, at least for a while. Oh, except for his belly. Chubby little frog needs a chubby little belly. We gotta make a note of that. Okay, there we go. So let's go to color for a little bit. Like I mentioned, this is the green tree frog, but it's not entirely green. There are a couple areas on this frog that are kind of uh, white, almost yellowish, a little bit of browns and tans in there. So what we're gonna start off with is with the brown. Uh, the, on the green uh, tree frog, it uh, has some brown coloring by the nostril. There's kind of a white streak that comes around and ends somewhere over in this area. And underneath the legs, underneath the belly, is kind of some of that tan color. So first what I want to do is use my brown to kind of create a guideline for that, that white stripe that comes across here. It comes just over the top lip. lip. It's kind of like a mustache. <laughs> Uh, it just hits across the bottom of the ear here. Like I said, it, it ends over here. So I'm going to just start by making a light line that's going to come and be right under the, the eye there. It's going to swoop over to the ear. And then we're going to come pretty, pretty directly back to this point here. So we get this. It's like a little mustache. Swoops up towards the eye, a little bump. And then kind of comes back to this way, about about halfway between the uh, the two limbs there, halfway across the belly, and then it has a thickness too. So it, it swoops back, and it is gonna head back in this direction. 
like this. And it is going to join just over the mouth, right around there. So we want to note that so we didn't make sure we don't color that in, in green. This, uh, this whole area here does have a little bit of a brownish uh, edge to it. I'm, a, I'm not going to use the, the point of the, uh, the crayon so much as the edge of it. I'm going to kind of brown it up. Not everywhere, but just a little bit around the top here. Putting a little bit of brown over the top. And then the same on the bottom. One interesting effect that you can get when you are using the sides of your crayon is if you take your paper and you put it on top of uh, some kind of a, a texture like concrete and you use the side of the crayon, you're going to get a lot of that texture uh, coming through onto your paper. And it's an interesting way that you can sometimes create textures on your paper is if you put it on top of some surface, like for example, if you were going to draw something that is made of wood and you take this, uh, your paper, and you put it on top of a rough piece of wood, use the side of your crayon across it, you're going to get a lot of that wood grain coming right on uh, to your paper. So you can get a lot of detail very quickly, very easily. Uh, there, like I said, there's some more brown under the legs here. I'm just going to take this brown crayon and kind of go along the bottom of this, this toe here. And most of these pads are actually kind of brownish. As you can see, again, I'm using the side of the crayon so I can get kind of a light haze of brown. This finger too, same thing. Doing across the bottom of it, just fading it up. This finger here, like that. All right. It's almost like it's stepped in mud or something. Now, uh, we are seeing the other side of the underside of this uh, leg. So where is, we're going to see a lot of green up in here. On this one, because we're seeing the inside surface, there's going to be a lot of brown here. In fact, the only green we're going to see is probably just up here. So I'm going to color an awful lot of this in brown. Coming down here to the pad, and again the bottom of this toe, the bottom of that toe here. Something like that. Okay. So, so far you wouldn't think that this was a, a, a green tree frog because all we got on here is brown. And we're going to continue on the, uh, the back foot here. Same, same thing as we did before. Most of these toes are, they're mostly brown. I wonder if that works to help it with, uh, with camouflage. If it's crawling up a, uh, a tree and it's not yet in the leaves, to have the bottom sections of it kind of a, a brown color, it might camouflage in better with its environment. Frogs use enormous amounts of camouflage. Not that it's not the brightly colored poison dart frogs, but uh, frogs use an enormous amount of camouflage in their, uh, their survival adaptations. In fact, there is a frog that has on its hindquarters two spots that look very convincingly like very large eyes. And uh, it, the reason for that is that if there's a predator sneaking up from behind this frog, it'll think that the frog's looking straight at it. It's a very interesting frog if you uh, are interested in the idea of adaptation and, and camouflage because the eyes of that frog, well, the fake eyes, the faux eyes, are very convincing. All right, the last bit of brown that we're going to be doing here is on the belly, and then we're going to use a little bit more of it up around the face. So let's do the belly first. And we're using the brown here as much for coloration as also for, for shading. This is a shadowy part on the bottom, and we're going across the bottom with dark brown, and then just push down a little bit lighter with the side of your crayon, and you can fade, fade up. See how it gradates up? It's very dark down here, and gets a little lighter as we go up. We're going to do uh, something similar on the vocal sac up here. Dark on the vocal sac, and then fading up quicker on the vocal sac than we did here. This faded up over a longer distance, a little quicker in this area, okay? We're gonna get a little bit on the bottom jaw here, a little bit of brown through here. And the eyes of this frog are kind of a golden color. Uh, they have a beautiful coppery kind of golden color to the eyes. And we're going to, uh, I don't have a golden crayon here, and you don't need one. Uh, gold, uh, depending on the environment, it's reflective, but usually gold will appear as shades of brown and yellow and maybe some oranges kind of mixed together, you know, with white for, for highlights. And we're going to 
represented here by kind of going around the edge with kind of a bit of a darker brown, just around the edge like that. And then maybe just a very light amount of brown throughout the eye, with the exception of our eye light, our highlight in the eye there. We're going to leave that completely paper white right there. All right. And that's looking pretty good. I'm going to add a little touch of brown into this white stripe because it's more of a tan stripe usually. And maybe a little bit of brown around the nose. And that is looking pretty good for our use of brown, I think, at the moment. So, is it time that we get to some green for our green tree frog? <laughs> it's, at some point we had to get there. I've got a green crayon for that, and I think what we're going to do is probably do a mix of green and maybe add some yellow for some highlights uh, to bring out some of the, the golden color. Uh, we're going to delineate first where the green actually is, though, uh, because the entire frog's body is not green. There's kind of a white belly down here. I'm going to do a bit of a line right here, and that's about where we're going to end our green, and the same over here. The, the white kind of goes up between the legs, and I think we're gonna, gonna end our green right around there, so we'll keep this kind of light colored. So now, we can take our green and pretty much just go over this whole area pretty lightly to start, though, to see how much I'm putting down. We don't want to go too, too dark, and I'm just using the side of the green crayon. And I'm not, I'm not going to go into the legs now, because the legs are going to have a little bit of highlights to them. You can see that I took most of the paper off of this crayon, so I can really... It's like a paint roller. I can just hit a lot of areas all at once. With this, making sure I don't go into this, this white tannish stripe here. What we're doing now is just doing the, the lightest shades of green that are going to be present on this frog. And what we're going to do later is go back and add some, some darker areas to this. But this is just our first pass. And I think I'm going to let this green just blend right in with the brown by the nose. Nothing wrong with mixing colors. In fact, it makes your drawing look a lot more realistic when the colors are all kind of bleeding into each other. Okay, I want to be very careful I don't get green in the eyes here. And the back of that eye socket. There we go. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good about the green we have above there. Now there's going to be a little bit here and a little bit in this area. So let's hit this. And I think what we're going to do is same thing we did, just blending the green and the brown there. Let's do that on this bottom jaw a little bit. Bring some green right up through in there. All right. And in the same way that we faded our brown up, we're going to fade our green down. So I'm a little darker with the green. And then I'm going to fade it lighter and lighter as I go down, which means I'm pushing down less and less with the crayon. Because this area here should stay kind of light colored. Okay. So that's looking pretty good. Let's hit our legs, and then we'll come back and we'll do some more of our shading. So this leg here, definitely green. And we're going to end the green up here because we want to leave this section kind of light colored. All right. And you'll notice what I'm doing uh, with my crayon is I'm, I'm putting the tip of it kind of up to my lines so I can control where it goes as opposed to uh, doing it backwards and it'd be hard. Like I might fade out if I'm kind of going back this way. So I'm trying to have my, my tip be at the point that it is most important to have control. You can see I'm doing it kind of upside down here, a little bit awkward, but it's working out all right. Okay, and the same kind of thing, we're going to blend the greens down into the browns here. Blending, blending, blending down. And over each toe. And I'm just going to blend all that so the green goes right down into all of our brown areas. Same for that toe right there. Okay. This back, yeah, you know, I didn't get enough of that shoulder. It needs more shoulder green. There we go. All right. This back leg here, I'm just going to go over the entire thing in green. Ha! 
How's your drawing coming out? If this is your first time drawing a frog or anything, and it's not exactly the way that you would like it, I've got some good news for you. Anybody who works in art and craft and drawing, it never comes out exactly the way that you want, but it gets closer and closer the more practice you get. It's all about observing what's in nature, what's around you more, uh, getting better at that act of observing, you know, where folds are, you know, the idea of, of adding this little bump to suggest the pressure. It's noticing those little details. And it's, uh, more than anything, it's just practice over and over. The more you do it, the more mistakes you get out of the way, uh, the better your results get. Because it's all, we all start at the same point where we can barely draw a straight line. And people that have a lot of skill, they are just people that already got a lot of their mistakes out of the way. If you're just starting, you're starting in the same place they did, you just, uh, the only difference is you haven't gotten those mistakes out of the way. So you just gotta practice more and get those mistakes done so you can get a little bit better control over what you're doing. But I guarantee you, even people that have been doing it forever, it never comes out exactly the way that you'd like. I'll give you an example right here in this picture. Uh, these lines here, they're a little rougher than I was talking about. In fact, the, the fact that these lines around the toes were rough was what made me think about talking about the idea of drawing smooth lines when you wanna uh, suggest the, the properties of a surface. So even for people that have been doing it for a long time, there's always mistakes and there's always room for improvement. And that's a good thing because if you have nothing left to improve, you got nothing left to look forward to. All right, so that's looking pretty good. So the next step is to uh, start creating a little bit of uh, shadow in here. Uh, the light is kind of coming from up in that direction. We've suggested that with the, uh, the highlight in the eye here. So we're thinking that shadows are gonna be kind of wrapping around on these lower edges. I've already kind of naturally done that a little here, but I'm gonna do a little bit more. Darkening up down over here. Because the shadows are on this side and the highlight side is up there. Really darkening that up. And same in the fold of this leg. There'd be some shadows in there. And shading up in that direction. I bet the body is casting a little bit of a shadow on this leg here. So I'm gonna darken up this side of the leg as well. Just like that. This area here is gonna be darker than this area up here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda define where I want the highlights to stop. The highlights will be mostly up here. And I'm gonna start darkening up as I go down. So I'm gonna start with this eye and the lower part of this eye ridge is gonna be darker. So let's start darkening that up. Right there. All right, so darker across the eye, paying close attention to not get the eye green at all. All right, darkening across the bottom here. And the highlight on the top of the face is gonna be here, and this area here is all gonna be darker. So we'll go from the nose to the eye, a little bit darker. Just like that. And you can see just by doing that, you really start getting the feel of the shape of the face. We're really suggesting the shape of the face here. And we're gonna continue that back through here. There's kind of a, a, a slump to the back here. So in the same way that the back slumps down, our shadow is gonna slump down. And we're gonna do that something like this. So we're darkening that up. Just like that, up to the hip bone here. And We'll start shading some of this here. Like that, just darkening this area up. And you don't have to push down very hard. The slower that you accumulate more pigment on your paper, the more control you have over it. You can keep looking at it, evaluate, like is this working the way that I want it to? Is it coming out the way that I'd like? And if it's not, you have an opportunity to kind of change things, redirect. Maybe uh, maybe save it. Definitely shadows in here. It's a, it's a crease between the belly and the leg and also it's on the shadow side. So we'll get some shadows in there. But we wanna make sure we leave this area here white so we are still gonna have that fading down to the belly. But we do wanna darken up this area through here. 
because this is the shadow side of the frog. All right, coming up and over that area there. All this is all shadow, 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 leaving this area white. All right, now this arm here is on the shadow side of the frog, but we still want to suggest dimensionality and, and, and suggest that there is light falling on it. You can imagine if the light's coming up over there, maybe uh, there's a little bit of a shadow from the head coming through here. So maybe there's a little bit of lightness up here. Maybe there's some lightness on the top of here. So we're going to suggest the highlight here by darkening up through here. Darkening up that part of the, the leg. All right, there we go. And now for this section here, we want to keep this area a little lighter, make this bottom side a little darker. I'm going to start from the elbow and start fading down like that. Darken up that heel and all that is kind of dark. Same with in here. I'm just going to darken up this, this hand just a little bit because this is all, this is all on this side, this is all shadow. All right, there we go. So now we're going to do a little bit of the opposite of shading things darker. We're going to give things a little bit a sense of glistening. I got a yellow crayon here. We're going to use this almost as though it's kind of a golden sun that's coming down from uh, the sky over there. I'm peeling back a little bit of the paper because again we are going to be using this on its side. And we're going to do this sparingly. We don't want to turn this into a, a yellow green frog. We want to keep it a green frog, but we're going to add a little bit of highlights into some of these, these lighter areas. So first, I'm just going to follow the contours of the top, doing that same kind of uh, shading, except this is going to make it look like there's kind of a, a golden light up there. See how I got just over the top of this eye casing, over the top of the nose, go up over that nostril a little bit, and then continue it all the way back along the back. Just a little, a little touch of golden light. All the way there. We're going to do the same on this hip to suggest the same kind of light is kind of glistening on top of this hip here. And the same on top of the, uh, this uh, eye socket right here. Okay. And the next thing we're going to do is just very softly go throughout this whole area that we left open very softly. Just give it a hint of golden light coming over the top there. Just like that, over the top of the head, here, over the face, just like that. Now I mentioned that, uh, and that's it. We're good with the whole back. I think that, that really gives a feeling that there's light coming down. We're just gonna hit a couple of the other highlight areas and then we got a little bit more to do with this crayon here and then we're all set. Let's hit some of these highlights right here. The same, uh, not the hard edges that we did up here, but just this soft kind of extra yellow that we added across here. Let's hit a little bit here. There's a little bit of that golden light hitting here, maybe across the top of this leg, maybe through here. Maybe it's hitting the back heel a little bit because it's sticking way back out there. This arm too, we got a little highlight across here. Let's feather in a little bit of yellow and across the forearm here. There we go. And now what we want to do uh, with the yellow next, we're done with the highlights, although, you know, I'd love to put a little highlight just on that little finger right there. Maybe a couple of these fingers too. Or maybe not. It's up to you. Your picture doesn't have to look exactly like mine. All right. Uh, the next thing I'd like to do is uh, respect the idea that uh, some of these areas are not stark white. This uh, white-ish stripe could have a little bit of yellow in it, especially because it's on the, the shadow side. So I'm going to put a little bit of golden in there very lightly. So now what we have is a mixture of brown and yellow in that area. I'm going to do the same under the, under the uh, throat here in the vocalizing sac. There we go. Just a little bit of yellow. Just to make it so it's not paper white, so it makes it jump off the paper a little more. And the same for the belly. Kind of fill in what we left is white with a little bit of yellow. Maybe what I did there is a little too much. Like I said, everyone makes mistakes. <laughs> I think I would have liked a little bit less yellow there. I'm not going to tear up the picture though, because I'm perfectly happy with it either way. But there we go. Okay. And the last thing we want to do with the yellow, oh, a little bit more on the lip, this mustache right there. The last thing we want to do with the yellow is around this eye. Remember, there's a golden eye. We put some of the brown in. We want to put a little bit of this yellow in too. Remember, we're not going to go over that highlight. We're going to leave that paper white. 
right there and make it really jump out at us. All right. And we got that. We could make that even a little bit more golden by taking a little bit of orange. Frogs can have some pretty uh, elaborate patterns in the, uh, the iris of their eye. We could make some little swirls of orange in here, very subtle, but they can take the feeling of the eye and really turn it into kind of a golden color. If we get some little swirls of orange in there, just like that. And now I'm just gonna step back and kind of look at it and see if there's anything else that I would like to do. I think I, I might like to put a little bit of brown to accentuate out this, this ear section here. I think it might be nice now that we have the green in to maybe darken up some of these sections of brown. Remember I, I mentioned that there was some brown that goes around this light white area. Might be nice to darken up some of these a little bit. All right. And I think I feel pretty good about that. How did yours come out? If you enjoyed drawing the green American tree frog with me, please like this video. Leave a comment below to let me know how yours came out. And subscribe if you'd like to join me in the future for more drawing from nature. That's it, and thanks for watching.